Welcome back to the video series on the play framework using Scala. In this video, we continue talking about play forms. We had left off with this error. Okay, so this error, uh, we are using these helpers. We have a login form. Our login form is being provided, but we have this message saying that it needs a messages provider. Now, the reason for this error message will become more clear in the in just a minute. It turns out that the play forms automatically add some text and label things for you. And messages is a mechanism inside of play for handling adding text to things. And the reason you need this is if you internationalize your applications, you have to be able to handle people trying to view your website in different languages. And play forms has built in support for helping you to do that. So how do we get it so that we have a messages provider? Well, it turns out that this request header that exists, that we've been passing around, could be augmented. If it were a messages request header, then it would have the, it would work as a message provider. And if I hit go on that, now our only problem is that our login needs to have not just a regular uh, request header, but a messages request header. So how do we make that happen? Well, in order for that to, to work, instead of having just a regular abstract controller, we need to have a messages abstract controller. And instead of just having regular controller components, we need to have a messages controller components. Okay. And the request is implicit. Let's see if that makes our code happy. Nope, we are still getting not enough arguments. Oh, yep, that also makes sense. Um, we made it so we have to pass in a login form to the login page anytime it gets rendered. Since we're now using that form over in our view, and here we go. Okay, so this was the form we had written for our get. This was the form we had written for our post. This is the form we had written when we create the user. And this is the form that's currently being provided by the play forms. And you'll notice that it has this extra information, which is why we needed the messages uh, aspect of this. Because if someone had requested this page in French, this shouldn't say minimum length. Uh, it should have the equivalent French text. So the rules that we put in here, play is automatically showing them to us. And now we need to complete our controller down here, which right now just says OK. Uh, we need to complete this controller so that it will work with the form. Now previously with our post request, we took the body and we parsed it. Now though, the, the form library should be helping us to do that. So if I take my form, the login form, I can bind from the request. Okay, so there are ways of binding and then there where you provide mappings or JavaScript parsed values, or you can bind it directly from the request. And that's what we are going to do here. And then on this, I can call a fold operation. Now the fold operation, if we hover over it, says I don't have enough arguments. It takes two arguments and they are both functions. The first argument is a function that will be called if there were errors. So if there was something wrong. In our case, if their username only had two characters in it, that would be a problem. If they had left something blank, that would be a problem. And this first function is what would be used to fulfill the request. If everything goes right, the second function will be used to fulfill the request. So let's go ahead and let's fill this out. So for our first function in here, it turns out the argument that it gives you is a form one of these login forms, um, but with error messages in it. Okay, so well, if that happens, it turns out that I want to tell them that things went wrong. Sorry, R E Q U. I'm going to give them back a bad request and send them back to 
the login page, but with this bad form. So views.html dot login one form with errors. Okay, so because something went wrong, instead of just giving them an okay, I'm gonna give them back a bad request, but I want to re-render out the page, but using this form that tells them what went wrong in it. Now, this is functionality we really didn't, we added a little bit with this flashing and said that the, the login name didn't work, but we didn't try to do anything like put uh, length requirements or anything like that. That would have been a significant amount of code. Um, the second function, what do we do if it goes well? Uh, oh, I should add an S there. If it went well, then it's going to give us, and we need a function that takes our login data and gives back the, the result. So this login data, remember, is one an instance of this case class up here. So it has a username and a password in it. And at this point, we could do code very much like what we did earlier, except it's now, I use the short name LD for the login data, LD.username and LD.password. We take, if they validate, we take their username, uh, we attach it to the session, just as it, we did before. In both cases, we redirect them either back to the login or uh, forward to their task list. Okay. Well, I don't have any errors in here. Let's come over and let's check on a refresh. Okay, so just to see if this works, first let's do it. Hmm. Oh, hey, this these should actually probably have been attached to the create user. Oh, well, that's, uh, ha! <laughs> and because I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of funny. Um, because I didn't put this on the create user, it turns out once they've made a password, I shouldn't be validating it. I, I, in the sense that I can't tell them how many characters they have to have when it's the right one. Uh, I can't log in because we put this on the uh, as a as a login. I should probably change this over and make it a, a create, but I won't take video time doing that. Uh, this drove me right back here because pass only had, and I used a text field instead of a, a password field. It only has four characters in it, and we have to have eight for this. Once again, this would have made more sense in the in the create user. So, but you can immediately see the benefit here of of the play form is giving you the constraints. It's automatically validating. I didn't. The only code I had to write to enforce that rule was that right there. Okay, saying that I needed a certain number of characters in in the passwords. That was the only thing that I had to put in there. Play did everything else kind of for me. Uh, and where this really comes in handy is if you have larger things, you can also write custom validators. So they have a number of simple ones for you. As I said, text with various lengths, uh, numbers of, of very, and you can put ranges on it. Um, but you can also write your own validators so that uh, you can make sure that things fit really what you want. Some examples of things they have, they have the text, they have a non-empty text, a number, a long number, dates, which are very handy because properly parsing out a date and sending back error messages could be tedious for you, but verifying that your user did it with the play form is much easier. Email. You know, there are lots of places where you have to ask your users for email, and you can specify if I were to say that I wanted an email address here, and like for a username, I could change text to email. I wouldn't pass any arguments. And then it would require that they type in a valid email and do enforcement on that. Uh, you can also do Booleans, checks, and, and optional types. Hopefully this gives you an idea of, of the forms. Um, I am going to go ahead and switch this over and make this a create instead of a login. And I'll do that before I push the code. But when we come back for the next video, we're going to be talking about Web 2.0 and, and Ajax calls instead.